Christ 17 TV back at you with another and another and another. This one is summertime. When I was a kid, every summer I used to go to my granny's crib. Used to leave New York, fly out here for the whole summer and spend the whole summer at my grandma's house. And I love my grandma's crib. We had we had tangerine tree, plum tree, apricot tree, pomegranate tree. Um, it was just, it was different than what I was used to during the whole year. Because I went from, from the trenches to the trenches, from the Tenderloin to San Francisco, to the, in the Bronx. And, you know, we never had it easy. Single mother, two kids, you know, shit was hard. So when I came to my grandma's house, it was really a vacation to me. It was like real different, you know what I'm saying? Um, there wasn't all the shit I was seeing in the Bronx, shootouts and motherfuckers getting killed and all kind of shit like that. And and I loved it, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, it was something I looked forward to, you know what I'm saying? Get getting away from all that shit, all the fucking fights and the fucking killings and. Just all the shit, and that, and then when I used to come out here, I used to play ball, all kind of shit. And guess what? We had cable. My grandma had cable. We never had cable my whole life growing up in the Bronx, Tenderloin. So what I re remember is I love sports. So if you remember when the Braves was on TBS almost every day, I used to watch so many Braves games, it would blow your fucking mind. The All-Star game, the Home Run Derby, and I would pretend I'm Ken Griffey Jr. or McGuire or whatever, and I used to love it. I used to imitate players' stances. And the summertime was just a good time for me because I got to really be a kid somewhere else than in the in, in the hood you know what I'm saying because the summer is when it all goes down in the hood and I would miss that you know what I'm saying I'd, I'd go at the end of June to after Labor Day come back and I used to go play baseball I used to go fucking watch watch motherfuckers play softball all kind of shit and it was just a different time for me for a time where I didn't have to worry about all that crazy shit. And my grandma was was older. She would even pitch to me in the front yard with the with the bat, with the wiffle ball, and I'd be hitting it. Psh, psh. And my grandma was, I wanted to say then when she was throwing me the ball, she was probably in her eighties, okay? And my grandma was 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 great to me. You know what I'm saying? I my grandmother's gone. My grandfather died when I was real young. And my father, I didn't find him till I was 21. And that story is in one of my videos months back. But my mother, she always did the best she could with the little bit that she had. And your flowers now, mom, always. But grandma's house, okay? I used to go swimming all the time. And when I was in San Francisco and New York, I never went swimming out one time. I can't remember one time I went, no, no. I take that back. I did go swimming maybe one or two times on 23rd Street. But besides that, I never was going out swimming and all this shit. And I love swimming. So... Actually, that's where I learned how to swim. I used to take swimming lessons as a kid, like five, six years old. And the funniest part is my swimming teacher was one of my friend's older cousins. And she used to teach me how to swim. Her name was Diana. And she taught me how to swim. So she's known me since I was a little kid. You know what I'm saying? And... That was what I loved to do, play baseball and swim as a kid. And that's what I did all summer. I swam, 
played baseball and watched baseball. And I'm not going to lie to you. I used to go in the backyard and take them fucking tangerines when they were green still, right? And hit them shits, those and the plums, over my grandma's roof, right? And I, I could hit four. This is when I'm like 10, 11, even 12. I would hit it over her roof or over over the neighbor's roof, and it'd be hitting cars, windows. I was bad as hell still. I, I, I was from the Bronx. I had that in me. You know what I'm saying? But I never forget every summer I'd be looking forward to going there, eating pomegranates, eating plums, and it was crazy because, like I said, we we never had cable. We never had a microwave. So for me to be able to throw some food in the microwave, make it myself, even if it was burrito, bean and cheese, pizza, um, beef, you know, the old school ones, the old school ones, if you know, you fucking know, you know what I'm saying? And those were my days. Those were like the days I looked forward to, to going outside, running around, riding, riding a bike, because you have a bike in the Bronx nine times out of ten, your shit gonna get stole some way, somehow. That's just how it happens. So I, I used to ride my bike all around this bitch. I mean, at a young age, just riding around, riding around, riding around, riding around all day, swimming, baseball. I mean, I was so busy. By the time I got home at night, well, not at night, but when my grandma said, you coming inside? I sleep like a fucking baby. And this was the best part, though. I ain't gonna lie to you. That 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 I could get up and go on the side of the house, sit in the chair, and actually see stars. New York, with all the buildings, you can't even see no damn stars. And my grandma used to be like, that's the Big Dipper, that's the Little Dipper. She used to show me all the stars. I've remembered things like that, though. First time I really got to sit back, I was probably like eight, nine, and just looking at stars. And I couldn't see that when I lived in San Francisco, New York, because there were no stars. It was all fucking, from all the cars and shit, the buildings are high. I didn't see stars. I couldn't. But here, everything was low, and it was lovely. And certain things I miss about that house. And sitting and looking at the stars as a little kid with my grandma was a real special thing for me. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention, I had my own room for two months. Had a water bed that my sister, that was her room, but she got older. She moved out, so I got to sleep in the water bed. And that was different. You know what I'm saying? It was... It was different from coming from where I came from and the shit that I've been through my whole life. Just that little time during the year, I would be like, okay, I don't have to deal with motherfuckers shooting motherfuckers. I don't have to deal with all these fucking shit, crazy shit, just all over the place. It'd just be nuts. So when this town was smaller, I mean, when I was here, let me see. When I was a kid, it was probably 50,000, 60,000. There was good parts, but there were bad parts too. I will say this, the the bad parts I did hate is the racism here. I I I had a um friend named Roy. He was from Stockton, moved to Tracy, lived across from my grandmother's house. And people used to pick on him all the time call them all kind of names, and I never understood why. Because when I lived in the Bronx, San Francisco, I played with all different races of kids. Chinese kids, black kids, Mexican kids. Then when I moved to New York, Puerto Ricans, blacks, I mean, everybody. We had like a f maybe one or two Chinese kids, some kid named Johnny Ho, who went to my school, <laughs> and they used to make fun of him because his last name was Ho. Come here, Ho, and shit like that. But that was, you know, that's a whole different story. But besides that, I got to kind of just do all the shit I wanted to do.
play baseball, run around, ride a bike, have my own room, watch baseball, stay up 10 o'clock at night watching that second game that came on at 7.30. You know what I'm saying? Grandma, she baking brownies, she making chocolate pudding. You know, it was different for me growing up then, and I miss those days. Because now, once that you get older, times have changed. Your grandmother's, no, she's no longer here. And you see yourself getting older and reminiscing about times when you was a little kid with no worries. You didn't have no bills, you didn't have no kids, you didn't have no dead friends yet. It was just, you know, a kid just being a fucking kid. And up the block, they had Clover, right? And um, Clover School. So the guys who play on the softball team used to go there and practice. So they used to let me play, like, outfield before because there'd be some motherfuckers that'd be smacking that ball. So when they'd be... Hitting the ball, I'm out there playing like I'm Ken Ken Griffey. I'm like this, okay. Running, diving for balls, catching some, missing some, just just having fun, you know, during the summertime. Instead of thinking, is somebody going to steal my bike? Is somebody going to hurt my mom? You know, because there's been times that my mom been robbed at knife point when I was a little kid. I mean, I, you know, and she wasn't there. I worried, but for me, it was just kind of like a breath of fresh air. Had some friends there that I liked, you know, when I was growing up. And, you know, I would like to see them during the summertime. And I'm not going to lie. I have fun. I have fun. When I was a little kid, I had fun because I didn't have no worries. See, because growing up in different places, when there's a lot of shit going on, even though if you're not in it, trouble seems to find you. Even though I'm not saying I didn't get in no trouble here because when I got older, I got in a lot of trouble here. So, but as a kid, that was like the funnest times for my summertime because I will walk to the place called The Plunge, okay? And I walked there at 10. It cost like, I think, 50 cents or something to swim all day. So I walk in with my friends with my towel. It was about, let me see, one, two, three. It's about four and a half blocks, long ass blocks, long, long blocks. But I go with my friends. We go swimming. I swim all day, jumping off the diving board, shit like that. And that was fun. I got to enjoy a little bit of my childhood during the summer times and got to actually do shit that we couldn't do in New York because there wasn't no pools close to us there in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't a place where, I mean, I could sit and watch games at my friend's house because none of us had no daddy damn near. None of us barely had money. Our mom was just getting by for all of my friends. We didn't have, we did not have cable. That's what we did not have. Now, when I lived in Manhattan, there was like two kids that had cable, and I was stay trying to go to their house so we could, you know, what I mean, watch some shit. But besides that, when I'm in the Bronx, we grew up hard, which molded me into the person that I am today, and I'm very happy with with that i got to see the hard hard shit and i got to live a little bit of the good life for two months out the year so i got older and i'm gonna say when i started to get like 15 is when i started getting in trouble but when i was a little kid like from like i want to say from nine to like 13 i was having a blast the girls loved me out here because i had this crazy new york fucking accent they loved it and then were the times that you can't get back you take for granted but now that you get older you look back and you say damn man them days was fun as hell and you wish you would have more pictures more 
more like photographs of those times. Because all I got is right up here. We don't have cell phones now where you take a picture of everything, your food, everything. Everything is photographed or on video. But those, those, those days were simpler times. No internet, no nothing. It was just you wake up, eat breakfast, 12 o'clock comes around, you get a ham sandwich, because that was my favorite, a ham sandwich with mustard. That's all I wanted every single day of the whole summer was a ham sandwich. Maybe a hot dog here and there, but a ham sandwich, I was good with a ham sandwich with mustard on it. It had to have mustard or I didn't want it. And breakfast, waffles. That's all I, I, I wanted was Lego, my ego, waffles. They didn't have all, all the flavors now, like blueberry, this and you had regular fucking waffles. Butter and syrup. That's it. That's it. Butter and syrup. We didn't have blueberry and strawberry, and it was simpler times. To me, the simpler times were better than now when you got all this technology. You had to go walk to your friend's house to see if he was home. You had to either call on the phone, not a cell phone, a phone that was on the wall, and you pick up the phone and you dial your friend number like this. There's no do 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 No, it's like this. Yeah, like that. And you have to see if they're home. And then if they don't answer, you end up walking over to the house, riding your bike over there, seeing if he coming outside, he want to ride his bike. You guys want to ride to the pool. You got a lock for your bike so our bikes don't get stolen. Don't forget your towel, all kind of shit like that. You used to have a blast, but that was a blast from the past. So now that you get older, you, you cherish those times because you never get those times back ever again in your life. But the more you get older, the more that you see, damn, I wish my son would have grew up in a time like that. Because you appreciate shit more. You know what I'm saying? You had to really work to know what was going on. You couldn't be like, Siri this, uh, Alexa this. Nah, you had to get in the fucking book and read. Encyclopedia, dictionary, everything. It was, it was simpler times and everybody worked harder to get knowledge. Now, Siri, this, Siri, uh, y'all know shit. You, you, you don't have to work for nothing. Everything is at, at the touch of your hand. But like I said, those times were the best times. Now, all these kids don't even be outside playing catch, riding bikes, making ramps, jumping ramps on your bike. They don't do that. Guess what that? On video games, on their phone. It's just different times, and I'm not going to lie. I wish those times can go back for the kids now because these kids don't, 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 when's the last time you seen kids outside playing hide and go seek, playing tag, anything of that nature, games like that? You know what I'm saying? I used to hide in my grandma's house. I had this one spot, and it used to be funny because whenever, like, say, Say my sister or my cousin Grant or somebody came down. I had this one spot that nobody would ever find me. It was crazy. And I never told nobody that that spot. Never. But they couldn't find me for shit. Actually, I had two spots. I had one in my grandma room. They could never find me. And then I had one in like the little door on the side of the house going into the Sayo, I had a hell of a spot. Nobody could find me that they'd be looking for hours and never find me. That's, I mean, I was climbing on roofs at the age, shit, jumping off roofs at nine. I mean, 11 foot roofs, 12 foot and jumping down, psh, climbing, and, climbing up there, climbing trees, hopping fences, being a fucking kid, enjoying it, enjoying just, just just doing what boys do. Come in dirty. You making mud 
you letting it dry out, and now it's a fucking dirt, just all kind of shit, digging holes, I was even, I was even chopping wood as a little kid, that's the kind of shit I was doing, I'm like, oh, let me get this little axe, little log, and chop it to us all the way through, and boy, did it take time, I just did all kind of shit, and, and to have times as a kid like that when it's you don't have times all the time when it's you're going to school and and you're going to school in the same clothes getting made getting made fun of gotta fight a lot it makes you very very strong but as a kid when you see a lot of the other kids with a lot more than you it's frustrating it makes you feel bad you get made fun of you get teased but look it makes you strong inside. But just for them two months, every year, I used to love that shit. I ain't gonna lie to you. Going swimming. What kid don't want to go swimming every fucking day? <laughs> what kid don't want to ride his bike every fucking day? What kid don't want to have a swing in the backyard you could swing on? What kid don't want to have his own room? What kid don't want to wonder where his breakfast, his lunch, his dinner coming from? Because when I was growing up, we had food, but it, it was tough. Try, try having to have liver one time a week. I couldn't stand liver, but guess what? You got to eat it because there was nothing else. Liver, rice, and beans. And we always, I used to love the other shit. Pork chops with the, oh my God, when we had pork chops in the Bronx, it was like Christmas. I used to love the fucking pork chops. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I love them shits. But when you're younger and when you live in where your dad's not there, your mom's paying rent, getting school clothes, and still got to do shit, get groceries, it's, it's hard for one person to do that. So, like I said, those two months was the time of my life when I was a kid. Don't get me wrong, I had super fun in New York. But everything was crazy in New York. That's just how it is. When I was here, when this shit was a little-ass town, which it still is, but it's almost twice as big or, or damn near three times as big as when I used to come for the summer... Was nothing like it, man. Was nothing like it. Hearing birds chirping in the morning. When did you waking up? Had a bird feeder. You see the blue jays, the fucking hummingbirds, all that shit. It was different. It was it was just different. You know what I'm saying? It was different and, you know, it made me think a lot and appreciate, you know, the hard times. Because these good times, which wasn't just good, it was like I got to enjoy being a, a fucking kid. Getting to go swimming, riding my bike. When I'm growing up in these other spots, you got to, at, at 8, you got to act like you're 13. At 13, you got to act like you're 20. Because everything is way faster. People are different. If it's not your family, then they might try to fuck you over. And even if it is your family, they might try to fuck you over. So no matter which way you look, you might get fucked over. You know what I'm saying? I see my mom trust a lot of people in her life, and they did her really wrong. A lot of motherfuckers. And my friends, too. I've had friends to fuck me over, steal, all kind of shit that, you know... I would have never thought that person would do that to me. But guess what? They did and they will. And they'll do it again if you give them the opportunity. So just for those little five, six years when I was a kid, swimming, watching all them baseball games by myself damn near, and just like seeing a different part of life. You know, I got to be lucky enough to have my grandma till she was 101 years old or damn near okay and um it was different never had my grandpa there 
He died when I was a kid. My dad, I found him at 21, but sometimes I wish I would have never found him because not, nothing changed. I just knew you were there and you weren't there when I needed you as a father. But, you know, the streets made me tough. My mama, she made me tough, and I got to give it up, you know? The Bronx done raised me, taught me how to be a man. Here just taught me how to be a kid, okay? To be a kid. New York taught me how to be a man. And, you know, I just wanted to touch because Granny Crib is different now. After the she moved, some people moved, moved fucking in there. We had the biggest tree in the whole, damn near like the whole neighborhood, like the whole city. We had vultures in that tree. That motherfucking tree was so damn big. We actually had turkey vultures that lived in our tree. And they used to fuck me up because I never, ever would see them on the ground. One day I came in the backyard and I, I don't know if it was a dead whatever, but there was something dead in the backyard, and this motherfucker stood, man, he, that motherfucker was like up to my fucking chest when I was that young. It was a big fucking bird. I went right back inside the house like, oh, shit, that bird's too big for me to, to go outside. I thought that motherfucker was going to take me and fly me up there in the tree, but, you know, they didn't cut down the tree, made a swimming pool, cut down the pomegranate tree, Cut down the tangerine tree, cut down the apricot tree, cut